Welcome to the Grace to You audio blog. After you hear what John MacArthur says, stick around and find out how to get in on the conversation. Science has tried to tell us that evolution is a process called mutation, that living organisms have the capacity to mutate, simply means to change. But you need to understand this, mutations do not change the nature or the kind of any living organism. They don't make it anything other than it is. What mutations involve, and this is important, is always a loss of existing information. There is never a gain of information. Mutations never add new genetic information. Mutations, therefore, do not work toward an upward evolutionary process. Mutations are not a mechanism for upward evolutionary process. Dr. Werner Gitt, a director and professor at the German Federal Institute of Physics and Technology, answered this question, can new information originate in a living organism through mutations? And this is his response, and I quote, Mutations can only cause changes in existing information. There can be no increase in information, and in general, the result of mutations is injurious. New blueprints for new functions or new organs cannot arise. Mutations cannot be the source of new information." End quote. Honest scientists must admit that all of life had to be designed individually by an immense intelligent mind that programmed everything. Now when you think about the complexity of this, it is absolutely staggering. Just think about the human brain for a moment. The human brain is more complex than a 747, for example. A 747 is made up of six million components. Can you imagine a 747 evolving out of a scrap pile of metal? It's absolutely ridiculous. The more science looks at life, the more complex it becomes. The body, for example, is made up of trillions of cells. In just one of those cells, one out of trillions, the amount of information, the amount of genetic information in one of those cells has been estimated to fill at least 1,000 books of 500 pages. That's to run one cell out of trillions in one human body, and most scientists Thinks, think that is an underestimation of the complexity. Where did all this information come from? Better, from whom did all this information come? To make evolution the answer is ridiculous. To make chance the energy is also ridiculous, so ridiculous as to qualify someone for a trip to the mental institution. Why then do scientists continue to advocate this ridiculous theory of evolution motivated by chance? Why do they do that? Well, the bottom line is they do that to avoid God. They do that to push God out of their lives, to avoid His law, to avoid His standards, to avoid His will, to avoid His Word, and to avoid His judgment on their lives. Evolution is nothing more than what Henry Morris so aptly called it, the long war against God. Evolution is the contemporary expression of the long war against God. The Old Testament says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. That is foolish. It is not rational to reject a Creator. It is not rational to empower chance. It is not rational to assume that one kind of living, living organism can become another. 
It is not wise to reject God's law and God's word and God's gospel. If it is neither rational nor wise, then why do men do it? And the answer is that men do it because they love sin and they love darkness because their deeds are evil. They love themselves and they love their sin and they refuse to worship God or submit to His Word or His law. They will not recognize Scripture. And by the way, Scripture shows us that what is in God's world is in God's Word. All we know about creation from nothing is what the Creator has told us, and the only place He's told us is in the Scripture. Evolution is a war on God. It is the, the sort of contemporary fight, the contemporary modern attack in the long, long war that Satan has carried on against God. In 1989, scientist Henry Morris wrote an excellent book called The Long War Against God. And in that book, he shows the impact of evolutionary theory on the world. And he reveals the irrefutable fact that the almost universal belief in evolution that permeates every area of human thinking has affected every area of human life. Not just how we view the physical world, not just how we view the biological sciences, it has affected social sciences, it has affected behavioral sciences, it has affected psychology, it has affected the humanities, it has affected liberal arts, it has affected philosophy, and it has even affected religion. Quoting Henry Morris, he says this, "'Evolution's lie permeates and dominates modern thought in every field. That being the case, it follows inevitably that evolutionary thought is basically responsible for the lethally ominous political developments and the chaotic moral and social disintegrations that have been accelerating everywhere." End quote. He goes on in his book to show how everything from genocide to fornication to homosexuality to abortion to all matters of the destruction of human dignity, not seeing man as made in the image of God, to crime, to drugs, and everything else is all a part of the result of a materialistic, humanistic universe without God. And so, says Morris, evolution is nothing more than the pervasive modern version of the conflict of the ages, the long war against God. Evolution is empty philosophy. It is vain deceit. It is designed to attack the Creator and His glory. It denies His glorious revelation in Scripture. It denies His authority over the universe of man. It denies the dignity of man. It denies the image of God in man. It is a cunningly devised fable. It is religious harlotry. It is the latest abomination of the earth spawned by the father of lies, Satan. Now, if I could have said it any stronger, I would have. Thanks for listening. Now go to gty.org slash audio blog and get involved in the conversation. That's gty.org slash audio blog.